Hey everyone, this is Stephanie Schulman. Welcome to my fluid art channel. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, I've been doing fluid acrylic painting since 2002 during the pandemic, like a lot of people. Um, I do mostly swipes these days. I did start with blooms doing the Shelly art technique. I've dabbled in multiple different areas of paint pouring, but I am really drawn to swipes. Um, paints for this one, I'm just going to drop down and show you those real quick. We have a Prussian blue. I'm doing uh, Southern Ocean blue with Matisse. Uh, Indigo Waves by TLP. Just love those, those little piggies. Um, my favorite gold, which is an Aztec gold by Arteza. And I'm throwing in some pearl white. Both of those are micas and those last two are semi-transparent. Um, so a little bit more um, about my style. I really like to do swipes. I like to do sort of an abstract creation. Sometimes I like to bring about um, an image that you can easily find in a painting, but other times I just like to be very abstract. Um, this one turns out to be very abstract. I'm layering in some kind of hidden pillow in this painting. Um, starting with the gray base here, gray blue base. This is a base that I used in a previous commissioned painting that was a water themed piece and I had some left over. So I really like the way it mixes and blends with some of the colors. So I wanted to use, use it again, um, but add some more blues and layer some paint so I could get some of those hidden colors to kind of come out. The canvas that I'm working on in this piece is an 8x12 gallery wrap canvas. I do really love the gallery wrap canvases because I like the way that the cells and the swipes in the paint just kind of generally flows over the sides. So that is sort of my go-to canvas for most of my paintings. I usually try to cover the sides with my pillow um, to help kind of the flow of paint as you begin to spin and spread the pillow out. I do work in a large kiddie pool or like a bus tub for some of my smaller things to catch the mess. When I'm doing my larger pieces, like a three by three foot, I tend to put those on the floor uh, and just kind of put a big plastic sheet underneath them. I try to let the paint dry and use it a couple times so I can uh, minimize my waste. But this one, we're in a kiddie pool here. And I generally, I've had a couple kiddie pools, but um, I generally try to clean the paint out every few months and you get a nice big thick layer of dried paint. Kind of pulls right off for those of you that have done that before. It's just nice and clean when you get it out. Um, I keep my cake spinner right in the middle of my kiddie pool so that... Um, it's just ready to go. I also have another cake spinner in my bus tub that I use for like my tiles and smaller things that I'm working on. So the first color I'm going down with here is that Indigo Waves with TLP. We're gonna go in after that with the Prussian Blue. Just gonna kinda layer these up. That's the Aztec gold that I really like. It is a semi-transparent. I use it in a lot of my pieces. I really like it in the background um, because it can really bring some highlights and some depth. And then the pearl white. Um, wanted to get a good balance of lights and darks. And you'll notice with the colors that I'm using, the gold with the blue, I do like to, when you know, when you're thinking about color theory and looking at the color wheel, I kind of like to go um, sort of two colors that are at least semi-opposite on the color wheel, and then add in some secondary or tertiary colors that accent those colors, and then um, an aspect 
of light and dark to some degree for a good balance of colors. I'm gonna cover the whole group of layers that I already have there again with the Prussian blue. And I'm gonna kind of swipe into these colors here. Just like Jessica Winterstrom has been doing a lot of this, and I did pick this up from her, although this technique, um, actually, I think she's only the only person I've seen do it recently, but I feel like I've seen people do it before. And also, this is really sort of in line with just swiping the colors across. I think that when you do this technique, though, um, you really get a full saturation blend of the colors from underneath so as long as you swipe into the under colors just right um, you get some really nice blends and plays with the colors the key to doing this is you don't want to dip too deep um, or you're going to bring up too much of your pillow in this case this gray pillow works really nice because it blends with these colors you don't get that contrasting bright white when you're trying to do some of those darker colors. Um, I did another one of these recently with a black pillow and uh, it's, it's really quite stunning. So I'll use various um, palette knives to swipe during most of my swipes. Um, usually we'll start with kind of a medium swiping tool and work my way down to smaller for details. The cell activator that I'm starting with here is white, titanium white, and a mixture of like a cobalt blue. Sorry, a layered cobalt blue, it's not mixed. Um, I put the white and then the blue on. So I'm just working in the cell activator that I've already laid down looking at the composition, trying to figure out where I want to move the paint, how I want the cells to look. You can begin to see some of the under colors kind of coming up through depending on how deep you push into that, those layers of paint there. I also like it to mention that like when this piece dried, um, these colors look so different to me than when I finished the piece. And I think it's just the one, the layering of the paint colors and the fact that this pillow is gray. You'll see, you saw the picture in the beginning, but you'll see it again here in the end um, when this piece is completed. Just doing a little scooping and pulling or scooping and dragging. Um, I just recently had the privilege of being out at PORCON in Las Vegas and had the honor of working with Jessica, Jessica Winterstrom. I mentioned her name again. Um, she's an absolute pleasure to meet and um, silly and fun and I really enjoyed her class, took some tips and tricks away with me, so we're using some of that here in this painting. I'll start to speed up a little bit here in um, this section through to the end. So I'm going to move a little bit more of the paint and then we're going to go ahead and start tilting it and spinning it out here. I really don't like to leave huge puddles of color so I tend to sometimes overwork the paint and therefore don't have a ton of negative space that's something I'm trying to work on, but I always have a tendency to lay down too much paint.
this style also calls for a lot of paint so it's hard to avoid that so you really got to consider like where are you moving it how you're swiping it and um, you can always pull in some pillow or scrape some some of the paints off if you get too overboard um, and come back and drizzle some pillow in if you need to Starting to tilt here, trying to get some movement of the paint, stretching it in the direction I want it to go. I did really like the center of this, so I wanted to mostly keep it center, um, trying to be mindful like when you're tipping it to bring the composition back to the center of the piece. Once you hit one of those corners and get the pouring medium colors to run over the edge, it will grab it and help you stretch the paint. That's just one of the techniques or tricks you can use if you really want to keep something on the painting, but you don't want to lose all of it. You just grab the edge of it and then kind of pull it back in or tip it the other direction. So you'll kind of notice when I'm doing each corner, I try to bring it back to the center in between tipping it to the corner. And that's to kind of keep my center similar to where I started. It will obviously not be the same. You can sometimes get wonky cells if you are too aggressive. And give it a few spins here. Just working a little bit more of that cell activator where I have a lot of white. I don't always hit my pieces with a torch, but this time I did. Um, there seemed to be a lot of bubbles. I think it was in the, I'm not sure if it was the pillow or the pouring medium. Actually, I thought I had most of the bubbles out when I started on the pillow. So I, I think it, they came up during the addition of the pouring medium layers. Just thinking about the piece, looking at it, trying to figure out whether I want to move anything more, do anything more to it. Making sure I got enough paint off of it so it doesn't warp and crack on me while it's drying. Not a lot of movement left so probably got quite a bit of paint off i still think there is some that can come yet all right well as we wrap up here um if you like what you're seeing don't forget to like and subscribe um, I will show you a final picture here in the end. Thank you for joining me today, and hopefully you picked something up that you can take with you. Have a good day.